espresso before the end of the class. So we're going to move into that quite quickly as well. And um, I'll cover, as we go through, a little bit of the history of espresso and espresso blending and tell you a little bit about the espresso blend that we currently have, um, that we're currently using today and that, that's running on the website. So espresso is the name of a drink that is made from an espresso machine. It was, it's been made um, since the beginning of the last century, and um, it was originally, um, the, the, the first espresso machine was created by a man called Pavoni in Italy. Uh, the first machines were producing a drink that is quite a lot different to the espresso that you and I are used to today, but it did have um, that similar creme or cream that you get on the top. Um, which we're all used to, um, and it was probably closer to um, a drink that was two-thirds the size of this cup, whereas we're used to a drink which is more like third, kind of a half of the size of this cup for a single espresso. Um, when in 1904 the first uh, espresso machine patent was put um, in, in Italy, uh, there, there wasn't really a lot of demand for that kind of drink. Um, coffee was almost entirely drunk as filter um, or mocha pot um, kind of across, across the world. And when they began brewing it, um, it didn't really take off. It just wasn't, wasn't really a thing. Um, espresso bubbled away under the surface um, in Italy for probably around 20 years until um, the Gaggia family created a new espresso machine which um, really took off in Milan. So this machine was um, very expensive to make. It had required um, a big boiler inside it which could heat water um, and then hold pressure. Um, but the pressure it held was generally about one bar of pressure, so that's one atmosphere of pressure. When you opened, um, they had, rather than having buttons or levers, they had literally taps on the front, which allowed the pressure to push the hot water through the coffee. When they were um, opened on the front, uh, boiling water, uh, so that's water at, which was stored at above 100 degrees centigrade, but as it came out of the machine, it was 100 degrees centigrade, which was pushed through coffee, and we'd achieve that extraction of, of, um, of espresso again, really not in the kind of um, style that we're aware of today. Um, it was a, around uh, 1936 that um, the Gaggia family came up with a new design of espresso machine uh, by which they were drawing hot water from a boiler system into a chamber which was um, under pr pressurized by a spring. Um, and this was the first espresso machine that we saw, which had the kind of iconic lever on the top. I don't know if many of you have seen lever espresso machines, but there are still places you can go in London today uh, which use espresso machines. I think Bar Italia is still using um, a lever espresso machine in, in Soho. And uh, Proof Rock, who, which is based on Leather Lane, uh, have been using a, a, a lever machine on and off for a few years now. Um, Around this time, um, the, a couple of things happened in coffee that um, have massively affected the way we taste and drink it nowadays, specifically in terms of espresso, because of the state of the um, German economy directly after the uh, sorry, not the German economy, the Italian economy directly after the war. Um, coffee was really beginning to take off, um, specifically espresso in, a, in these espresso bars. Uh, in Milan, and it was taking off with the very wealthy um, kind of part of the population, the upper class. As there was this change of government after the war, um, it was decided that anything that was imported or anything that was in high demand from um, the upper classes should be heavily taxed. So the import of green coffee became very highly taxed in Italy, driving the price up. At the same time as that was happening, there was a strange phenomenon of coffee demand amongst, because uh, it became an uh, aspirational drink. Um, and because the um, 
people wanted it, uh, it was decided a couple of years later that it was a drink that um, there was a, there was a strange law. There was a strange law in Italian uh, government and politics, whereby the government could set a price for a drink, or set a price for something, because it was seen as being an everyday requirement for people. Espresso became seen as one of these things, and that meant that uh, the government would set a price uh, equivalent to one euro. So um, what ended up happening was there was this strange situation where the price of green coffee, or green coffee was heavily taxated on its way into Italy, but once in Italy, the price, the maximum price that could be charged for it was nailed down and very low. Um, and that massively affected the coffee that was able to be used in espresso. Um, it meant that it had to be, it had to come from countries that produced large volumes um, at low price. So that's uh, countries like Brazil, um, Colombia, but it also meant um, having to use massive quantities of Robusta as opposed to Arabica beans. Robusta is a slightly cheaper um, species of coffee. Um, most coffee you see nowadays, or all the coffee we sell, is called is an Arabica variety. Um, has more flavors and interesting things. Robusta has more um, caffeine and creates more of uh, gas in when, it, when it's brewed with espresso, which is why during that time, um, flavor profile of espresso became quite standardized. You'd have these um, from the Robusta, you'd end up with a very, very heavy crema, uh, very dark in color, and you'd have um, kind of popcorn-y, um, roasty flavors. And from your espresso, uh, from your Arabica, you'd have um, kind of nutty, traditional uh, Brazilian flavors. But there wasn't really any fruit-driven flavors in there. There wasn't really any um, acidity. Um, and that's really what's driven um, coffee all the way through. In the 1940s, uh, a company called La Marzocco decided to put two brew boilers in their espresso machines. Um, that was actually done to reduce, again, taxation, because they had to pay less tax on including two boilers. But it's a system that's been used across multiple um, espresso machine manufacturers now to control the temperature at which coffee is brewed. Um, and then moving moving on, they put um, electric pumps to create more stable brew pressures into espresso machines, and we've ended up with the machines we have today. And what we've seen over the past 10 years is a movement um, to put high quality coffee from different origins into espresso. And what you will likely have seen um, amongst specialty coffee um, roasters, like ourselves, um, is a move to, to make um, slightly more interesting, uh, full flavored coffee profiles for espresso with um, less, of, well, no robusta in our case, and, and less of that kind of bitter flavor. So what we're looking for now in espresso is really rich sweetness, um, nice balanced acidity. Lots of people maybe take it a little bit too far, a bit too much wild acidity. We're looking for balance in our cup, we're looking for acidity, we're looking for sweetness, um, a really delicious mouthfeel, and that iconic coffee bitterness. Okay, so that's kind of the history of espresso. I'm not going to stay too much on that because I'm sure you all want to drink espresso now, have a taste. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by running through and making an espresso straight off. Um, then I'm so if you just watch what I do, I'm not going to talk you through it this time, but I will talk you through it at least twice more before you guys come up and have a go yourself. Any questions so far? Oh sure, sorry. <laughs> so that is one, which I imagine is four or eight. So that's eight. This one's eight, and that one's twelve. If you guys would like any more coffee, please just uh, feel free to. You need a cup of eight, don't you? There you go. Cool. Yeah, I think so. So if you could, um, if you could just make sure everybody's topped up, that would be great. Is that still attached? Also good? Cool. Right. 
So um, as I said, I'm going to walk, do a walkthrough now of making an espresso and have a quick taste and just check we're all tasting perfect. Okay, so this is our espresso, something you're probably used to seeing uh, quite regularly. Um, do you guys all drink espresso straight, or do you normally prefer it with milk or hot water? Yeah? Straight? <coughs> cool, that's good. That means it's going to be easy for tasting later on. Okay, so I'm just going to have a quick taste of this one, make sure we're properly dialed in, and then we're going to make loads so you can all try it and have a taste. That is good. Do any of you guys want to have a taste of this one? No? You can have your own in a minute. So all good. Right. So espresso is um, a really simple thing to make. What we're looking at doing is following very definite steps. And so long as you follow the steps perfectly, you will always produce the same espresso. Being a barista um, is about being like a robot. So as a great barista, you should be following the steps perfectly the same every time, as long as you end up with a really great cup of coffee. It, what that then means is, if you want to change something in terms of um, your brewing, so long as you just, um, just change one thing, then you get a really great representation of what that's doing to the cup profile. So, to make each individual espresso, we need to have an espresso machine. On our espresso machine, we have what is called a group. So this is a two-group espresso machine. This is one group, this is the other group. Um, well, this is the group. This here is our porter filter. That's P O R T A filter. Uh, it means portable filter, um, and it has a basket in it. What we're looking to do is fill this with, um, depending on your own recipe, um, around 16 to 20 grams of coffee. So, on removing the porter filter from the group, I'm going to flush the group. And the reason for doing this is to make sure that the brew water here is at the correct brew temperature. What happens with lots of home espresso machines is that when you um, when you initially turn on the group, you get a blast of very, very hot water. If you allow that to brew through your coffee, because you've not flushed it, that will over-extract the coffee at the beginning of the brew. So you want to start off by just giving the espresso machine a quick flush as you remove the porter filter, and that's going to make sure that doesn't happen. Next, we need to knock out our last puck and give our porter filter basket a wipe with a dry cloth. So this cloth is always kept next to the espresso machine and it only gets used for cleaning this porter filter. So we get told off regularly. So that lives there and it's only for porter filter cleaning. Uh, likewise we have one here for milk cleaning. That's only used for doing milk things. Now next what we want to do to achieve a perfect extraction regularly is make sure we're grinding our beans nice and fresh. Now with espresso, it's particularly key to use fresh ground coffee. So we're actually going to grind for each coffee we make. So I'm inserting the porter filter in this little rack. I'm going to turn the grinder on. And whilst it's the coffee is grinding, I'm going to be dosing the coffee from this doser into the porter filter. OK, so you can see here. The coffee is now dosed into the porter filter um, in kind of an, it's, it's a little bit consistent, but not, it's not accurately consistent. So what I'm going to do is give the porter filter just a slight tap on the bars here, twice, 
only twice. <laughs> and then using my finger, I'm going to push the coffee around so you can all see. So, yeah. Yep, and I'm going to level it off, bring it into the center. Now, what I want to do is just make sure, without making any downward pressure, that all the gaps that are in the basket, um, below the basket rim, are filled. So I'm just kind of moving this mound of coffee around over the top to make sure there aren't any big holes here. Is that what the temp is for, to make sure it goes flat? So, well, this is called distribution. So here what we're doing is making sure we have an even density of coffee all the way across the basket. Um, and now what we're going to do is push the rest of this coffee back into the, um, into the doser chamber. So then we know we've got an even density, and then we're going to tamp. And the, the tamping is about making sure the density remains the same, a little bit tighter, but at the same time we get a, a, an even spread of coffee across the basket as well. So if I push this back in here, we know that we've got a level of coffee all the way across at the same depth, and that it's packed in the same density, which is perfect. That's an OK use for that cloth, because I'm getting to use it with coffee stuff. <laughs> OK, so next, I'm going to lean my porta filter on the side of the counter, just like this. If you pop it on like this, um, you're going to get a lot of wobble from the porta filter, and you're also going to damage the counter. If you rest just this lip here on the side of your counter, you shouldn't do any damage to the counter, and it makes the whole thing a bit more secure. Next, I'm going to pick up my tamper. This would seem like a really simple thing to do, but there is a special technique for doing it. No. What we want to do is pick up the tamper with your index finger on the front, your thumb on the back, and then wrap your hand around it. And that's important for two reasons. When we come to tamp, what we want to be doing is tamping with a very straight wrist. You don't want to have any bend in it or be putting any pressure on your wrist. This is more important for people who are making 200 drinks a day, but it's a it's good technique to learn now in case you have a lot of friends around for lunch or something. So if you pick up your tamper, uh, again, index finger on the front, thumb on the back. Now when we tamp and put pressure down, we're pushing down through our elbow in a straight line through the joint, which means we're not going to get RSI after that big lunch with all your friends. Now, with your having your index finger on the front and your thumb on the back, you can give your tamper a little twist. And if your tamper isn't flat, you'll feel the tamper begin to move off flat. So just slight twist, and you'll be able to feel that you're tamping nice and flat. Um, now, what's most important here is that you tamp nice and flat. You don't need to worry about how much pressure you're putting. The difference in pressure is nowhere near as important as making sure you've got a good, flat, even tamp. So there's no point standing here, giving it your all. It doesn't doesn't make a difference. So I look at all the men when I said that. You ladies don't do that. You ladies don't do that either. Um, you don't need to tamp hard. Just there's very little difference in terms of the extraction based on your how hard you tamp. You know, when the coffee gets into this wrestling machine, it's being extracted at nine bar of pressure. So you pushing really hard here isn't going to make that much difference. What's important is it's nice and flat and level. Next, we're going to take our uh, porta filter and insert it back into the group. And what we want to do is immediately start brewing. Now, because I talk a lot, it's been a long time since the porta filter came out of the group and it's had time to heat up again. So I'm going to flush the group again quickly here, but you wouldn't normally do that. So we insert the porta filter here and immediately start brewing. And what's happening is we're looking for, um, in this time, the nine bar of, pre of water, uh, so nine bar pressure of water. Um, it's being pushed through the machine, pushed through the water. We're looking for 25 uh, to, to 25 milliliters of water into each cup. So we're looking for around 50 mils of, of liquid altogether. Um, during the 25 second extraction, we've got nine bar of pressure aiming to extract around 18 to 21 percent of what is in the coffee puck into the cup. So we're looking for 18, say 20 percent of the stuff that's in that in the coffee being uh, migrated into the cup by the hot water. Okay. And here we have it. Here's two espressos. You can see they're quite short. They're nowhere near full of these cups. Um, but they are still tasty. Why is it so short? Because it's outside. 
Um, so it does vary from machine to machine. Um, so they will vary from, um, generally the minimum they have is nine. But they will vary up to 15 bars of pressure. The thing to be aware of with a home espresso machine is that the type of pump that is used in, this, in the espresso machine itself is different to the one that's used in a commercial machine. It's um, so the type of machine. Um, I could give you guys some recommendations actually at the end. Yeah, I'll give you some recommendations of, of, of things that we um, we use. What I'll do is I'll start handing these out. What's the Pavoni one like? You've got a silver one, you know, the one with a lever. Yeah, with a lever. They're very good. Um, I've got some friends that um, get great results. We had to do a pilot and explain who did really need it. It's got its own steam arm as well. Yes, um, a friend of mine who's a very good barista has one at home. And um, he he seems to enjoy using it. So. so now what I'm going to do is very quickly try and produce an espresso for each of you to have a taste of before we um, get you all behind here to have a go yourself. So I will quickly run through the steps again so you can see them all a couple of times. So I flushed the group, got rid of my old puck of coffee, dry wiped the water filter, <laughs> dose and distribute. Temp, insert, and then immediately brew. No, there you go. Thank you. I know she just wiped the uh, the puck that was in there. Need to actually wash that. So, so um, here or? Oh no, sorry. Well, just in, in that water filter. You, so you'll be wiping it. Yeah. So if you give that, you can give that a rinse with water, but it. Only needs doing for a home machine yeah. every week, okay. realistically. Not too often. Not too often not at all. At the end of every day, yeah. <laughs> you do a good clean down in a cafe. But, um, <laughs> Pardon? It's actually just draining into this tray down here for today. Um, so I will be empty now before we, you guys start making your espresso. Okay, there's two more. So again, we flush the group, we get rid of our last puck, dry wipe the water filter. Ooh. That cup just likes moving there, doesn't it? Not at the moment, but it is something I'd really like to do. Um, I have some friends who started growing uh, mushrooms. Um, they can, can grow fantastic quality uh, oyster mushrooms, shiitake mushrooms, with the, uh, with the coffee ground. Coffee makes a fantastic fertilizer, um, because essentially it's just ground up bits of bean with a small amount of oil removed. Um, and when you put it through the process of making an espresso, what you're actually doing is pasteurizing it. So you, you actually kill off anything that's, um, any bacteria that's alive in the coffee or could be alive there. So you end up with a perfect substance for growing, um, there you go, guy, for growing things in. Did they come in green before they get roasted? Yeah, they come in green and then we roast them up. Um, so with the with the mushrooms thing, what you can do is take pucks like this and just um, without trying to touch them too much, you can just pack them into a bag, tie the bag very tightly, and you, you get skewers that have mushroom spores on them. So you then hang that up in a dark, damp place like a basement, um, stab the skewers in, and the mushrooms just... Crazy. 
So it's a really simple, really easy way to grow some fantastic mushrooms. So what do you? Uh, espresso, with the exception of a Turkish um, coffee, where you're brewing the, the coffee and the water directly together and leaving them together, espresso is the finest kind. What I will do just to demonstrate for you is get a place for it, because that makes more sense than trying to describe what that's like. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. You can have a. Uh, yeah, yeah. Have a feel of that. What we're looking to do, so you, you'll be able to work, which, work out which grind is best for your espresso machine, just by um, a little bit of trial and error, error with your machine. Yeah. Yeah. So. To stop that, so occasionally what you want to do is uh, use some of this, which is a coffee detergent. It's specifically designed to break down tannins and um, things in coffee that are sticky and brown, um, so mostly tannin. Uh, if you put your basket in that once a week, once a two weeks, it'll stop all those problems. But you need it. You do need. You need enough uh, of a fine grind. To really slow down the flow of water, um, so that we get that extraction of around 50 milliliters in around 30 seconds. Any faster, you get um, kind of a thin, insipid brew with um, lots of astringency and kind of a lack of flavor. And you over extract the spray. Oh, massively. So um, you know, you're looking at a window with our espresso. If you're extracting in 25 to 30 seconds, you should be looking at getting a really great shot. Um, 25 to 30 seconds, putting in, uh, say, 18 grams of coffee. Um, but that depends on your espresso machine. So the reason we're doing this method of um, filling the basket and leveling it off is just because for pretty much um, most espresso machines, if you do that, you're dosing the volume of coffee that the, the espresso machine is designed for once you camp. So um, if you yeah, nice, level it off. We get the right volume, so and then that dose of coffee should give should extract you um, around twice the the weight of, of brewed coffee as the coffee you use. So we're using 18 grams. We're looking. We're actually taking more like uh, two and a half times. So we end up with 50 mils of liquid. But um, if you want to go that far, you can weigh how much coffee is going into your porta porta and weigh the stuff that comes out, and you're looking for about two and a half times the weight of liquid coming out as as Brown coffee went into your pot of coffee. Cool. So now I'd like to jump in with you guys getting around here and making some coffee because it would be terrible if none of you got to make coffee. Um, I know some of you had to head off a bit earlier than others, so if you could let me know who you are, if you can wink or raise your hand a little bit. Yep, cool. So if you guys want to come around first, um, We'll do a quick brew, and then everybody will get a chance. I just want to make sure everybody gets a chance to brew some coffee. Okay, if you could wash those, that would be amazing. Sorry. I'm so demanding. Right, okay. So if you guys would like to step in, we've got two groups, so you can both make coffee at the same time. So what you'd like to do is uh, remove the portable from the group, that's it. And the knock box should, oh, sorry, I've moved it. <laughs> so we'll like, talk about mushrooms. <laughs> okay, so if you knock out your portable there. And dry wipe your basket, that's it. So next, you want to stand in front of the espresso machine. You twist the dial clockwise to turn the grinder on. That's good. And then start pulling the handle. A little bit more. That's good. So that's perfect. Give it a couple of taps. That's okay. That's it. And then you hold it up here and bring that coffee towards you. Fill the gap. And then push it back. 
and just you just want you just bring it just to level that off nicely. At the same time, what you need to do, so I don't think I mentioned this previously, you want to make sure you don't get any toffee on your seal. So if you wipe really nicely across the across the lugs here, that's it. And then uh, if you come over here to tamp on yep. this side, you can begin dosing your coffee. So remember the technique for picking up the tamper? So you kind of want to go around it. That's it. And elbow directly above the portal. So you keep your wrist nice and straight like this. Yeah? That's good. So a couple of taps there for you. That looks great. Again, we're going to wipe over there quickly. Insert, and you can put a double espresso into that large cup. And then you can use this one here. Oh, what we're going to do is we're going to watch the extraction. Okay. Push oh, it. Why didn't, uh, flush it first. Oh, that's okay. No, no, you um, you only need to flush it when you take it out. So that's cool. That's good. Oh. So if you watch the extraction, so we've got a really nice flow right here. It looks nice and creamy, nice and rich in colour, and the flow rate is going to get us to about 50 milliliters in. 30 seconds. So if we watch carefully now, you can see how it's beginning to pale off a little bit. Yeah. Now we want to cut the shot. Yeah, when it's begun to pale, it's begun to thin. But realistically, we're looking at the volume of the coffee. Um, the, the paling gives us an idea, mm -hmm. but it doesn't necessarily tell us when we need to stop. Oh. Okay. Gonna, not a problem at all. If you go around this side and enjoy that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, what you want to do is push this button here. We're looking for about that 30. 50 milliliters in around 30 seconds. You can see the extraction starts off nice and rich in color, nice and dark. And as the extraction goes on, what you'll see is it becomes a little bit thinner, a little bit lighter in color. That looks lovely. So keep it coming, and you're going to see it begin to see how it's going to become a bit more pale and light. We're looking for the volume, so I'd say we're probably at the right volume there. Um, you don't need to worry too much about the color, but it will give you an indication of where the extraction is at. So um, if you take it around that side and enjoy it, have a good taste. Okay. So slow is that when it comes red? Um, no, it just comes out very slowly when it's over extracted. So what you'll see is um, the flow rate is much slower, and you won't get your you won't get your full volume of liquid in the time you want. It. Turn it clockwise. That's perfect, and then start pulling that hand off. That's great. That's good, and then your two taps. That's good, and so yes, you go first a little bit more in. That's great, and then perfect, and then just level all of that off into the chamber. Great. Very tidy. Okay. Maybe a little bit more pressure than that, just a touch more. That's great. Perfect. And we'll just wipe that off there. Here. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> And then we're going to use this button here to extract. We're looking for that 30, uh, 50 milliliters of liquid in 30 seconds. Okay, so what's happened here is we actually did three taps ah. as opposed to two. And what yeah. that's done is it's increased the dose of espresso by a, about a gram. But that extra gram is providing more resistance to the coffee, and it means we're getting a slower extraction. Um, this slow extraction means in 30 seconds we're likely to get more like 30 mil, 35 mils of liquid, and what the Italians would call that is a ristretto. So it's, it's a, a bit weaker. It's a little bit, um, it's a different flavour of shot. So I'm just going to stop that there. Yeah. Um, what you, so what we find with this shot is it should have a little bit more acidity. It should be a bit more intense in flavour, um, but it just means restricted. So this is what we would use as the base for our flat white we're producing a flat white. So flat white, all the drinks on a coffee menu in a coffee shop generally come from an espresso, yeah. um, except for a flat white, which would use a double espresso. So that's what this, this would be here. You should have a taste of it.
and see what you think. And um, if you've got time, then we'll do an, we'll do another one if it's okay. Oh, we can have another good one. Yeah. Time.